Okay, so the question I want to ask is, will human genetic modification in the market age proceed by competition or consensus? Is our world governed by morals or money? Is money moral or immoral? The answer to this question may also determine how the pursuit of human genetic manipulation is determined. So I'd like you to tell me, do you think uh, your world is governed by morals or money? Who says money? Yes? Your life. Money? Morals. This is morals. Who says both? Is it governed by love? Love of life. Good. Money and love. Love of money? Love of morals. Love and money. Good. So let's think about those concepts because the theme of this conference is a consensus. What is the uh, meaning of consensus? Okay. So that's a big question. I'm just going to turn this uh, air conditioner off for the noise. If somebody can uh, turn off, please. I just turned it off. Yep. That's good for now. So the question, that is the world governed by morals, is an interesting one. As we know, bioethics is about breaking boundaries. Uh, dialogue and diversity are critical for this. But how do we see consensus building? Can we go to the other side of the bridge? and the, with the people of a different view and reach consensus when you flew into the country of Thailand do you think you have consensus with all the rules and regulations you will have noticed some things for example you should be dressed in the proper attire you should not be uh, taking immoral pictures with images of the Lord Buddha. You should not be doing certain behavior. But in other countries, maybe you can do different things. Uh, in this country, you can never mention ill of a royal family. So Her Majesty. However, in other countries, you can do a lot of satire. And they have different standards. So in this world, can we then reach consensus on how we might change ourselves? We also have the question of who decides. The limits of the governance of market forces are determined by some type of consensus. However, the modern industrial complex is so strong that it tends to set its own limits and to actually govern the government. Good morning. Mommy, I'm the right group. So, if our world is determined by the industry, then maybe market forces will determine what we do. So the theme I'm uh, raising is about questioning morals and money as what governs society. Maybe the temperature also affects welcome. So in some countries, the government is actually determined by money. It may be uh, very clear corruption. 
it may be less clear corruption, it may be uh, political uh, success is determined by how much money you can put into your advertising campaign or into your political campaign. How many votes can you buy? Okay. So, you know, if you want to, if I have an election, what's your price? If somebody gives you a thousand dollars to vote for them, wouldn't you vote for them? Or would you change your vote for ten dollars? Or a hundred dollars? Is it the public who will determine the answer to this question? Will the public actually determine whether or not we engage in human genetic manipulation? If it's not the government or industry. Bioethics is the love of life. Loving good, self-love, love of others, love of life. These are some basic principles. We know that new technology has been a catalyst for re-examination of medical ethics and social ethics and international dialogue on ethical principles. We have fields like medical ethics, dental ethics, environmental ethics, public health ethics, applied ethics, ethics of higher technology. If it's so much tied to technology, and technology is driven by venture capital and market forces and pharmaceutical industries and agricultural industries then perhaps there is a very close link uh, between these questions of determination by money. So for example, uh, new technology that a company can sell is more likely to be introduced when traditional technology that no one can make money from. So how do we change this uh, system? In bioethics, we have different ways to view ethics. Uh, descriptive ethics is the way people view life their moral interactions and responsibilities with living organisms in their life. I have my bioethics, you have your bioethics. So we can try and describe that. And those types of empirical studies or anthropological studies are something which bioethics is uh, undergoing. A second way of viewing bioethics is prescriptive ethics, is tell others or simply good or bad, or what principles are most important in making such decisions. It may also be to say that something or someone has rights, and others have duties to them. So if our laws are determined by our government, and our government is determined by the industry, then maybe our prescriptive ethics is determined by money. So that would be one of the questions for the broader title, which was, is genetic manipulation going to be determined by competition, market, or consensus? So we can reflect on this uh, interactive ethics is discussion and debate between people, groups within society and communities. Such dialogue skills are necessary to live harmonious with the others. But where is our interaction? We have a social media, okay? we have the regular media, which is controlled by industry, yes, and politicians, and we have uh, forums like this, which may be determined by who can afford to come to Thailand, who can come to our meeting. Who can speak English? I will try. <laughs> In the, uh, maybe I'll sit down. By the microphone, that'd be a good person to take. Okay, so. 
the Article 1 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and Social and Economic Rights is the same words. Uh, all peoples have a right to self-determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. So even in 1945 and 1948 well, and the Human Rights and in 1952 when they had the conventions, this concept of development, economic, social, and cultural development was critical. There are many theories of emancipation of people and one of the critical determinants is economic prosperity. If you want women to be able to express their rights, you may not have to give them uh, an income. Yeah. Economic empowerment is probably the most guaranteed method of somebody's self-determination. So here we have this foundation of human rights, which is the pursuit of economic development. And it's therefore not surprising that we need to consider this uh, when we think about how we're determining our human genetic manipulation. There are different sets of international uh, standards. Um, I used to work on UNESCO committees and that's before UNESCO later. We have five, three sets of international declarations on uh, bioethics, money, and the last one, the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights. They do not. Um, there's some mention of economics in these articles, for example, in the Article 4 of the Universal Declaration on the Human Genome and Human Rights, it says uh, the human genome in its natural state should not be patented. Okay. But of course, if you modify it, you can patent it. also mentions about benefit sharing. And in the 2005 Universal Declaration on Bioethics Human Rights, we have some economic mention here in number 13, sharing of benefits. In Article 12, social responsibility, meaning a public tax system to help the poor and the underprivileged. Uh, solidarity and cooperation. Okay. And Article 8 on equality, justice, and equity. So we have some uh, methods for this. So these are different articles, uh, statements which governments were meant to adopt uh, in international law. Industry was present in the, uh, all of the discussions um, and some of the lobbying was done. Um, but mainly it was to avoid uh, an absolute ban on patenting of all types of genetics. That was a strong point that industry succeeded. And this in the 1990s was a very strong debate. Social responsibility in health is uh, clearly a very important economic issue. Do you like to pay taxes? Hello, do you like to pay taxes? <laughs> Registration fees, taxes, airfares, these are some social obligations, is that right? But it's based on the ethics of solidarity and social responsibility. We're going to come back to that theme. So we have a right to education. Uh, in trying to reach consensus on human genetic manipulation, one of the questions will be, can we reach a consensus? What happens when we cannot? Do we allow market forces to determine uh, who can purchase uh, genetic manipulation. Uh, if some of you have seen, there's a very interesting series on Netflix uh, on yeah, yeah, 
title is? Unnatural Selection. Unnatural Selection title, yeah. It's very interesting. It looks a lot at the cost of human gene therapy, which has become extraordinary. It's much more expensive than universal health care can provide in most countries. Can we justify it? Yet, uh, who's going to do the research to develop a uh, new technology? And there's a lot of questions on the economics of this, uh, a lot of ethical questions. Maybe someone will present that. But that is a big question. Do we let private market determine the prices? And do we allow self-determination of people to use the money, if they have the money, to purchase treatments when other people cannot purchase the treatment? But uh, this seems to be the current system of medicine in most countries. Universal health care is an alternative. I think bioethics is holistic, so we have to think uh, about this interaction between uh, traditional knowledge, modern Western knowledge, how do we determine the pursuit of the good life? One country has clearly a different policy when it comes to universal health care to another, which may be market oriented. So, how do we? allow these two systems. So if we have a country in Thailand, uh, can we expect for a child who has a genetic disorder in the house here to be able to buy gene therapy? Not likely. But we heard in our conference in January of some very exciting work on thalassemia gene therapy being conducted in uh, Thailand and some children have been given. There is a research trial it's possible usually to access more but once it becomes a commercialized product then the question becomes who's going to pay for it? And maybe we have then two different sorts of uh, therapeutic delivery system. One is delivery by uh, private industry and the other is delivery by public hospitals and of course we have charities. So in our balancing of individuals in society, how do we uh, reach a consensus? So I have some questions for us to reflect on. What determines your choices? I wonder what determines your choices. Is it what the monk in the temple says? Is it what your vision that comes to you in meditation? Is it determined by the salary that you don't receive? Is it determined by your religion, by your education, by what your friends say, what your professor says? We had a certain professor in Korea who got very famous by asking his graduate students, please give me your eggs, because I want to do a cloning. It caused him some trouble that he moved on to cloning dogs and cats. He can make more money by dogs and cats than he can by people at the moment. Can we extrapolate from fashion choices to genetic engineering? If we have a people buying fashion, can they buy their genes? And can we allow the private market to determine how much a person can enhance himself? So if I have the money, I can enhance myself. I can put an antenna in my head to become a cyborg, as some people have. <laughs> some of you may have been late. Is it because you were putting on the whitening cream? Marlon was at first in the room. Maybe he did not use the cream. 
this morning, or he got up early. So we allow people to buy this whiteness. Is this ethical? And ironically, for people who are white skin, they can buy tanning and uh, go on the holidays to get a good tan. Isn't it ironic? If we allow that, creams or going in the sun, uh, can't we allow it by genes or by drugs? Some things we can't allow. For example, uh, my former boss in UNESCO was from Senegal, and uh, he was telling me, his colleagues were telling me, in Senegal, teenagers were using hydrogen peroxide to whiten their skin. Um, I think there's a consensus that we shouldn't allow teenagers to use hydrogen peroxide to whiten their skin and ruin their skin. However, we let people use hydrogen peroxide to whiten their hair, okay? So they can whiten their hair, but not their skin. Interesting, but we can buy creams. So we have limits of safety. So what are the conditions required for happiness? A good quality of life, hope for the future, dreaming and planning, self-love and fulfillment, and uh, good genes, is that right? Or just happiness? So uh, we have these conferences to try and think about something different. We have to decolonize not only education, as we did here in the Asia-Africa Summit Hall in Bandung, our first graduation, uh, but also we need to challenge um, the forces. And do we uh, decide that we're going to let people buy whatever they would like, or are we going to limit that? So I'd like to open it for discussion. And when you raise the questions, um, if you don't mind to introduce yourself uh, on the video camera for people as well. So I will open for discussion now. Thank you. Questions? Disagreements? Any questions or disagreements? Comments? Yes, please, uh, Ryan, please use the mic. Uh, to, to what extent do you think should state policy intervene in terms of personal choices, for instance, enhancement of uh, one's physical figure? Do you think um, there is too much state interference in terms of the individual ethical choices of people when states uh, make policies, for instance, uh, considering, for example, the economic uh, repercussions when we think about these uh, new products in the market. Okay, thank you. Uh, so... I think um, that we have this... Uh, Think about what we allow now. So you had the freedom to get permission from your university to come to a conference through the aircraft, because you came on a regulated flight with uh, safety standards <coughs> about what type of aeroplane can actually fly in the air. We expect some standards now. Uh, we also... Uh, you had to follow the immigration procedures to come into this country and you had to go to the hotel and check in and uh, you followed certain regulations to come here. So we will always have some regulations that you have also the freedom, do you want to go to the gym? Do you want to walk or run up and down the stairs, use the elevator? Um, how much food do you want to eat? Of course, if we have no food, it does gives you an easy option. <laughs> no choice. But expecting at lunchtime you will have something to eat. 
then you will have a choice. We can access medicines in if we come in this conference in Thailand, we can access certain medicines over the counter which we cannot access in some other countries. Okay, so we can stock up on certain medicines uh, that might be difficult to get in other countries because of regulation. Um, we might also have certain other freedoms in this country as opposed to other countries. But about, so then genetics, if I can go to private medical practice or a private clinic or a private dentist or a private hair salon, then they are regulated by some safety standards and maybe that's at least what we can offer is some safety guarantee if you offer uh, services to people. So that seems to be a core requirement for offering a service to people is a safety based on the non-maleficence. Okay. But is there any other control or limitation? Um, there probably are depending on where the products come from. So for example, I can't put human embryos as earrings because that would be offensive to people. I can't use my uh, endangered alligator skin handbag in some countries. Okay, so we have products, living products. I can't wear abusive clothing in this country that has slogans which are abusive to certain groups of people. Um, I will probably have a lot of difficulty if I come naked to the conference. So there are, there are limitations, but I think there may be, in terms of medical services and cosmetic services, which are the two main service products, the main thing is the safety. But medicine also tends to be regulated with what's approved and medical. So who determines unapproved products of medicine, for example? In some countries I can buy those. So gene therapy um, is also a challenge if we, referring to the film we saw, some of us saw on natural selection, the do-it-yourself genetic engineering idea is that you can do whatever you like in your kitchen. And in fact, you can receive uh, all the ingredients can be sold, you can buy it around in most countries in the world you can buy, and you can do it in your kitchen this, in the, tonight you can start genetic modification. And even we had cases of people injecting themselves uh, in public venues with uh, attempts to do gene therapy on themselves. But once you start doing it for other people, it's probably going to be regulated that you can do some self-harm on yourself, but not for other people. This is Ronnie here. Uh, yeah. uh on the point, uh, on the question on the state's control on people's choices. So basically, it's already understood that when it comes to safety, we really give it to the state to decide on that. Like, even if people's choice is against their safety, so that the, the, the state would intervene. How about those questions that are controversial on morality and culture? Like, for example, should we allow minors to access condoms? or contraceptives or the Republic Health Law in different countries that have a strict culture and and allowing people on the use of family planning methods and reproductive health law. So I think that's the ethical question that we should answer upon the state's control on people's choices. Mm. Yes, so that, uh, that question as you mentioned is very uh, difficult. Some countries do limit the provision of selling of condoms and birth control. And uh, some countries, you know, you can get them for free from the government. Uh, in some restaurants, if you're interested, for example, the restaurant here in Bangkok, Condoms and Cabbages, very famous restaurant from a, a support group. You can always get uh, free condoms there if you want. Um, and yet in other countries, it's a topic which you should discuss. 
even uh, sex education classes in school in some countries to show a condom to school children is uh, difficult in some countries project that um, so but I think here we have the public provision of services or the public government restriction on the provision of services by other groups because of moral grounds but most countries in the world nowadays I believe you can get access to condoms um, certainly uh, you cannot get access to abortion services in many countries but for birth control most countries I believe you can get but it's not always provided free and in, in schools uh, in some countries and some cultures they do not have education using condoms but So that's an example. Would anybody else like to make any comments? Yes, sir, John. Yeah, just one thing, um, Daryl, that you said in passing a few minutes ago about um, genetic modification or enhancing yourself. Um, there might be less regulations on that than trying to impose some enhancement on somebody else. I'm not sure that we should have um, complete freedom to do what we want to do ourselves anyway, because if we live in a community, um, if we make a mess of ourselves, we'll probably expect the public hospital system or something to look after us, means that, which means that everybody else in society has to actually bear the burden of, of us doing silly things. Even if we don't have problems like that, if too many people um, modify themselves genetically, I mean, it may be that eventually it just leads to the breakdown of the whole society because societies do function largely um, because we are more or less the same and we feel pain in the same situations and, and all, more or less anyway and these sorts of things. So seems to me that even if we just do it to ourselves, there does there are some serious moral issues that need to be looked at. Mm. Yeah, thank you, John. Yes, I think so. Uh, we expect the public to take care of us in, if we live in such a system and we can't sort of let people turn to dust in their room because they made a mistake of using the wrong technology. The same if, uh, if somebody does a, you know, a, a nose job in a hospital, uh, they're going to be going to the hospital to be fixed up. Of course, who pays for that? If you have a legal liability system, then you may be able to get compensation from the... But here, maybe nobody wants to insure against the um, misadventure from germline gene editing, for example. Uh, how many generations in the future can you assume liability? Maybe Tamar will touch on that in her legal aspects in the paper. And we had a, you know, another question was one of the recommendations of government reports on when to develop uh, germline gene therapy is to say until everyone has equal access to enhancement it would be unethical to allow some people, the rich, to pursue this. But it seems that's very difficult to regulate and we're already seeing in the gene therapy pricing in the market now. Uh, only rich individuals can buy the gene therapy. Or in the rich or people who are so skilled in getting money from other people through social media campaigns or advertising their photos of a sick child that they can get money from somebody. But for other people who are from a less desirable social group or social race or a Cannot, they cannot convince people to get money for them. I see signs in Los Angeles when I'm walking you know, by my house even, people trying to raise money 
for the operation of their kid, and if their kid is in the wrong racial group or wrong social class, it's less likely they're going to get money for the operation. Of course, also these these groups tend to be less likely to be insured as well into an insurance system. So. Yes, Tama. So, according to John and you, um, what what happened? To, thank you. What happened to our autonomy? I mean, where does it end? I mean, um, um, how free am I to write my own story of life? <clears throat> I mean, it's becoming more and more important in, in Western uh, democracies. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, this autonomy, which is protected by law, basic laws even. I'm, I'm going to relate to you later. But uh, if everything is dictated by the law, um, especially uh, whatever relates to my decision and my own health, why should uh, anyone tell me what to do as long as it doesn't affect others? I mean, I agree that the law should intervene when, when what I'm doing is going to uh, affect others uh, for, the, for the worst. But as long as I decide for myself what, what is best for me, why should the law intervene? Can I just make one? Yes, thank you. Um, um, John? I think the... the um, basic issue is that almost nothing we do doesn't affect other people. Um, I remember a long time ago in Australia when we started anti-smoking campaigns, some people said that smokers shouldn't get any sort of assistance from the government if they get lung cancer, mm. because um, to a large extent it was brought on by themselves. Now that didn't get anywhere because you still feel sorry for people who get sick regardless of whether it's their fault or not. Um, so I, I mean, I think that there's a, um, on the one hand, if I punch somebody, that's obviously affecting somebody else. If I do something that's just to myself, um, and if I don't have any contact with other people or something, then it only affects me. But most, most of what we do to ourselves does affect other people to some extent. And I think that's where all the interesting questions lie. It's not a black and white issue that, I mean, John Stuart Mill brought this up fairly clearly too about self-regarding and other regarding actions. And I wish it was clear cut, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, you have more comments? Please go ahead. Yeah, so um, I think that the line should also be drawn clear. Uh, on, on this matter, especially when, when it comes to law, because uh, in concept, the law should do good to people. However, the law sometimes even makes it worse because there, it's the law are just created by people, and you know people could have biases on on morality, culture, and and on their economic uh, uh, gains and whatnot. So the bigger question here is who should really draw the line. Is it the people who create the law or the people who are affected by these new technologies like gene therapy? Uh, gene therapy could be used for good and it could also be used for, for bad. So uh, I think the bigger question is who should really draw the line? Is it the people who creates the law or the people who are affected by these new technologies? Okay, so maybe I'll wrap up uh, with some comments. Uh, also, I have a a uh, comment on the Skype from Manuel in Barcelona. Uh, he says the tax payment day should be a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with this? No. no. <laughs> uh, and and so it's a also, that we don't have control over if our taxes are used for weapons of mass destruction in many countries, uh, or how it's used for weapons. And uh, I think there may be some other comments as well. 
about the question of, uh, as you mentioned, Tama, is it autonomy? I think autonomy is a critical element. Uh, but with social responsibility, we should question um, our own use of our resources. So can somebody who's only going to get three months extra life spend uh, two million dollars on their medical treatment? Now, if at the same hand, if you let people buy their own helicopter or their own private jet, then why not spend on their medical treatment if that's how they choose? So, or their house. So, probably the difficulty of money and morals is how do we relate this to what is a, a good way to proceed? But I guess we can't limit people's choices. But through the, uh, if we don't harm somebody, we could use that argument. In terms of offering services, that also seems to be very important, the harm argument. Um, so loving life to protect it from being harmed. Should we stop the provision of treatment because not everybody can get it? I don't think this is actually a very ethical argument because we let people do all sorts of things uh, with their money and their choices. Um, I don't think it's ethical to restrict people's choices uh, when it comes to this. It doesn't mean we can't have a dialogue about it in terms of what's provided. Um, but that's an interesting world that we live in. So thank you to everyone. Uh, I think we've set the stage. We have some interesting questions about consensus uh, because some countries really want to control people's choices and uh, many countries have a sort of freedom. Um, how do we find this compromise in the world? Especially in the journal and gene editing, as we discussed in our summit meeting in January. Um, once you germline edit your children and they start moving around the world, uh, there's no turning back, so to speak. So maybe that is uh, some grounds to think about it. Uh, during this conference, we may see this issue. We we'll also have papers on other aspects as well. Thank you very much.